Hello, everyone, and welcome to Who Needs a Film Critic? I'm your host, William Yelton, and today we will be talking about episode seven of Squid Game. Let's jump right into the conversation about Squid Game Episode 7 entitled VIPs. The mask leader welcomes VIP guests to the facility for a front row viewing of the show. Meanwhile, in the fifth game, some players crack under pressure. Well, this episode is called VIPs for a reason, so let's start there. Finally, we are learning more about the folks who get off on watching these games occur. So (laughs) what were your thoughts on these individuals. I go back to episode one. We look at episode one and we see Gihan at the horse track and he's betting on horses and he's mm-hmm. in a totally different situation. But basically now the roles are reversed and now they have human horses that they're betting on. The money that they're betting, right? They're betting like a million dollars, right? Like just casually, right? You know, and it's like, like it's just, I mean, juxtapose that compared to what these guys are, what the players are playing for. Right. And how how much that money means to them and, you know, just how casually these guys are betting shit like that on these actual players. You kind of hear all these motherfucking legends and shit about what the rich are really like. And it's just like eccentric, like lifestyle that all these uh, rich white men basically do on the down low. I was just like, oh, the VIPs are a bunch of rich old American dudes. Or like, I mean, presumably American. I was wondering <laughs> uh, how you drew the conclusion that they're all uh, American VIPs. Uh, I've only seen two masks come off, unless I missed something in that episode. I'm just, I'm just assuming they're all American. I know one of them was English. You could, I could sense an English accent. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, the heavier I, there's, set there's white things. guy was definitely American. He had like a southern. I, I don't think this is about nationality. This is not about like this, that, whatever. It's about they're clearly representing rich Westerners. Satnam, you bring up a good point. I think my brain immediately went to American, but you're right. I mean, it doesn't need to be American. It needs to just, it's clear that they are Westerners. But why do you feel like the show made the conscious choice to make the VIPs Westerners and not other rich Koreans? I don't. I don't think the 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 Korean elite in, in in this version of Korea that they're portraying. I don't think they would want to see their own die. And it, you know that's also a liability concern. What if you know one of those players, right? Like I feel like you you can you can do it a lot more discreetly if you're shipping it out to the foreigners, right? Um, and, and doing it all all very covert. Um, but then also it's just like it's just pure entertainment because there's no obligation to care. Um, and so I think that's, you know, for me, it's, it's part of just like the colonial narrative that we've seen in world history. Korea is not like, um, like a third world country. It's, it is a rich country, but it also, it's not like America rich. And it's, it's not just America. It's, it's the five eyes. It's America, it's Canada, it's, it's uh, Great Britain, it's New Zealand, it's Australia. Like all of these superpowers culturally do have a hegemony over culture, world affairs. I don't feel like it's a capitalistic thing. I think it's more of the impression that, you know, America is this land where you can go and make your, make your fortune. Now, the one thing I'm disappointed in is that when you look at some of the wealthiest people in the world, that there's no representation from the Middle East where there's definitely, I mean, why didn't they have somebody from Dubai there where there's um, also excessive spending that's questionable and could have related to this. So I think it's more of a portrayal. They, I think they just wanted a defined portrayal between the US, which they portrayed as white, I wouldn't say older men, the only ones we saw were older and, um, and any other ethnic group in the world. Let's not get so bent out of shape about the fact that they're gonna accurately portray the richest country in the history of the world as uh, uh, with rich assholes, which we do have. So we can't make this into a national, like they're against Americans. It's not, that's not what this is. We have to remember how does America portray people in the Middle East? How does America portray people in China? How does America portray uh, people of other countries in their cinema? 
I think if we don't understand our geopolitical uh, influence on the world, like that's that's like kind of just basic. That's number one. Number two, we have a default in America. Whiteness is the default. And I, I'm speaking as a person who's been born in America, who I, I can't tell you how many times I'm uh, asked, uh, so what are you? And I'd say, uh, where, uh, what nationality are you? Where are you from? Uh, St. Charles, Illinois. No, where are you really from? Like, I don't think white people go through that. And I think like you can say that I'm from Kentucky and that's where you're from. Well, I was born in Illinois. I was, I was raised in Illinois. This is my home, but that's not what richness uh, represents. Like, like blackness does not represent richness in America. I'm sorry. Uh, people don't necessarily think of uh, other ethnicities as American in the same way. Um, and there is a perpetual foreigner thing. So I think they had to. If that, they were portraying power from a Korean's perspective, they had to have a rich, like, weirdo white dude that was depraved. That's basically how it had to be. This has been a really great conversation. I hate to cut it short, but we have to move on. So let's get to the fifth game of this series, which took place in this episode. What were your thoughts? Just pick a fucking number. Pick a number. <laughs> You're just going, oh, I don't know what to do. And then the guy is like, you know. number one. He's like, oh, can I be number one? Okay, sure. I guess I'll just pick the best position possible in the game. I guess I'm the main character, so I'll have to survive. Luck is on his side, and he like puts himself in the best possible position, where, by the way, number uh, 218 uh, is the one that's like gripping and fighting for everything that he's ever gotten in this game. He's the one, he's the one that's actually deserving. As the saying goes, though, usually it's better to be lucky than to be good. When you think about anything that's building um, wealth, it's not necessarily the skills of the people that's getting them there. It's the luck of an investment, for example. 50-50 shot, it's going to go belly up. If you're lucky, you're going to make money on it. So I think it's the same thing with um, Jihan because I think that he's got that piece of luck on his side. He's not good. He's not skilled. He's not great at decision making, but he's been lucky throughout the game. Is Jihan not good? I mean, I think that's debatable. Does anybody he's terrible. think otherwise? He was the one that basically freed everyone from the sugar honeycomb game. Once everyone saw him licking the fucking shit, it was like, oh, up here, mm. right? I mean, he he's a little lucky, yeah, but I All mean, right. he had to. He's used his brain and, and figured shit out. But was he lucky that his sweat dripped right off of his face onto the honeycomb, and that's how he was able to discover it? So this fascinates me because in episode one and two, we're talking about this complex character and how people have complaints about him. And I think that's perfectly normal. We're now on episode seven. There seems to be, uh, you know, so much uh, annoyance with this character. I'd like to ask those people, would you be okay if he died? Yeah, I mean, I would be a little confused if he died now, but I, I would like for him to die at the end. I, I would like that. I would like the girl at the pickpocketer to win. Anybody else that shares that they'd be like, yeah, if he died, if, if he had jumped through the glass and the glass fell, if he was number one instead, say if Gian had picked <laughs> number one, amazing who in this call would be uh happy with that raise your hand i mean i gotta be that's hilarious <laughs> it almost seems like we've turned into our own little squid game where we're starting to bet on who's going to make it and who's not and who we'd like to see go next so just a quick observation there i don't see a, an elaborate costume on you though ed not yet <laughs> <laughs> all right well while we're on the subject of life and death Let's take a look at our first scene of the night and discuss. Oh, <laughs> 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 Thoughts. I loved everything about this scene. Like Amen. as soon as she showed up behind him, you knew what was gonna happen almost. Um, what was he gonna do if he if she stepped on that glass? She was he wasn't gonna push her because 
what is he going to do going forward if no one's going to go in front of him? Her strength, fantastic. Um, her last words are hilarious. Um, she repeated what she said to him earlier. He didn't trust her. Like, if you betray me, you're going to die. Um, and I love that she held on to him all the way down. She was such a great actress that she was over the top. She was crazy. Yeah, you love to hate her. Like, oh my goodness, would this woman please die so we don't have to listen to her. That's what I loved about her. I'm always team villain and team crazy. Um, I just, I really enjoyed her character. She's always team females too. Like when she's looking for a partner, she's like, hey, females, we should stick together. We should stick together. And everyone just thinks she's crazy and they're writing her off. Yet she was able to cheat in this game, like in the honeycomb one, and never get caught doing it. So I'm actually a little bit sad that she didn't last one more episode along with the guy. But um, I just really enjoyed the crazy, but also um, smart moves that she has made. I didn't like her. I felt like she was annoying and she was like a caricature of herself. Uh, I think maybe it's not the acting. She's a great actress. I think like it was written like no person can really be like this. Like I'm really not that self-aware and even I'm not that obnoxious. Like <laughs> I she's completely ridiculous. disagree. I have to say she is my favorite character. I absolutely loved her so much. I knew from the moment that she came back into the game and we saw her, I was like, I'm going to love you. I just know it. We all have a friend like her who is just so like over the top and gets on our nerves all the time, but we love them so much and we can't not be friends with them because they are just so wild. And I feel like that was her for me. I was like, I just want to be around you so I can hear the stupid, crazy things you say. Skylar, maybe we can be friends. Let's do it. <laughs> we could all see it, right? Like that Duck Sue is really just a really insecure dude. Right. And at the end of the day, it was his, his insecurity that that really like was his downfall. Right. Like he did not trust himself at, you know, he was too scared to, to make any moves for himself. Right. Always hid behind other people. And, and it was in doing that that he let his guard down and trusted Minyo to like go in front of, you know, go in front of him. In any other situation, I don't think he would have ever let her get that close. I actually think like it was a pretty smart move. I think that was the only move he could have really made. <laughs> Like, honestly, I would have just like sat down and be like, you guys are up. I don't care. I'm sitting right here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not dying. As we all hope to not be in a squid game <laughs> with Anessa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure another move Anessa would approve of is the next scene that I would like for us to watch and then discuss. Let's take a look. villain of this panel over here what else was he supposed to do he literally just saved their lives i mean this guy was gonna sit there for the next nine seconds and just look at the glass because he did you know i get it the guy didn't want to die but it's like you gotta move i think that was the only thing he could have done the guys had nine seconds left i think it is what it is sorry this is just yet another situation where saying who has to like become a, a, a very like dark and evil person right and and uh you know I mean I wonder what's going on in, in in that dude's head you know is he like man like I literally just killed the kindest person to me in this entire fucking game uh so like really what's any worse than that you know what I mean and so like it's 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 just you know I'm I'm interested in seeing what happens after this in terms of all right like What's the big decision Song Wu's gonna have to make now that that you know fucks everything up all over again? So you know I'm excited to see what this leads to. He's just basically been outed, right? Every, like he, you know, nobody saw him necessarily kill Ali, and I'm not sure if there was any discussion after the game. But like now we all we all fucking saw it, right? Um, and and you know yes, you know he somebody had to do something, which will be Sang Wu's excuse. Um, or explanation per se, but uh, I, I don't think it ends there though. I think if G if Gihan if he ends up winning this game, I think he owes a big assist to Sangwoo. I think he's not like as likely. Um, he did try to screw over uh, Il Nam, the old man, um, uh, during the marble game, 
but it got caught and Ilnam made it okay for him and all that stuff. They cried, all that. But like, I think he would not have uh, turned on uh, Sung Woo. That was one person he would not turn on. And I think uh, Sung Woo doing this move and revealing himself, like Jen said, um, I think that's going to give gi uh like the ammunition to think, oh, wait, we've got another game left. Um, I'm going to turn on Sang Woo because Sang Woo sucks. Like, I think that's what this did uh, for him. So if he wins, he owes it to Sang Woo um, because gi again, he, he would win by sheer luck <laughs> that, that he uh, was able to, at the last minute, realize I, I can't trust this guy, even though he already kind of knew it. Ed, it's time for the annual uh, check-in with the wife on the couch watching the episode chat. Uh, yeah. What did she think about this scene? Uh, this particular scene, I think we were both puzzled. Uh, what all the fire, well, not, well, we knew the bridge blew up, but what was all this flying glass at the end? I, I didn't know what that was going to lead to, or we didn't know what that was going to lead to. If one of them were going to be injured, or would they all walk away so i guess we have to see what happens in episode number eight i do think that I, king got injured because yeah that's what i was gonna she, say that i remember i was gonna say now is like at the end that she was holding herself a little bit mm-hmm. and she um, kind of so gasped. i think that she might have got like cut or got like some glass in her they weren't going to shoot the players next necessarily but they were blowing out the glass as well as the plexiglass so if it hit zero anybody who was left on the suspension would have dropped and died. Mm-hmm. So you're saying the glass demolition was pre-planned and it was set to the timer. And then, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Definitely. It is that time. Everyone has sent me their reviews anonymously one to five, and I have averaged the numbers together. The panel collectively has rated tonight's episode a 4.3 which puts this episode in third place behind episodes six and four. All right, that concludes today's discussion on episode seven of Squid Game. Tune in next time to see what this panel thinks of episode eight. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We're also on the podcast app, so type Who Needs a Film Critic to get all the episodes downloaded straight to your phone. If you wish to join a future panel talking about another movie or television show, email me at whoneedsafilmcritic at gmail.com. That's it for now. I hope you guys have a good night.